Hey friends, Pastor Chris here with today's Gold Nugget from God's Word. Today we're talking on the topic, the topic of born again by the Spirit. We're in John chapter 3, starting with verse number 1. John chapter 3, verse number 1. So let's jump right in. There was a man from the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to him at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform these signs you do unless God were with him. So let's first answer the question, who was Nicodemus? Uh, he was um, a member of the Sanhedrin. It'd be like a senator, the ruling body of the Jews. He was a Pharisee. Uh, we find that in Acts chapter 23, verse 8. He was a master of Israel, uh, a leading official or a teacher. We see that uh, further on in verse number 10. He was wealthy. Uh, how do we know that? Well, in John chapter 19, verse 39, we find that Nicodemus spent a lot of money on the burial of Jesus. He was also a silent man at the trial of Jesus, John chapter 19, verses 39 through 42. Um, he came on behalf of the religionist. Those who are asking, is Jesus the real Messiah? Matthew chapter 21, verses 8 and 9, and then chapter 21, verse 23 of Matthew uh, give us those questions. He acknowledged that Jesus was a teacher from God. Uh, in essence, Nicodemus was asking himself, who are you? So that's who Nicodemus was. That's the first thing we need to understand. He was a very respected man, a man of power, a man that looked to, looked to by people as a man of wisdom. And so he himself was trying to find out the answer to that question, who are you, Jesus? Uh, verse 3 said that Jesus replied and said, Truly I tell you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 4, How can anyone be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked him. Can he enter into his mother's womb a second time and be born? So Jesus begins answering his question, uh, knowing that he's trying to figure out who Nicodemus is, and Jesus gives him this analogy of being born again, and he's talking about a, a new birth. And that new birth, if you see that in the scripture there, he said, how can anyone be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked him, can he enter into his mother's womb a second time? The Lord is giving him an understanding that you need to be born again. And in Nicodemus's mind, he's thinking of the physical birth. And yes, we were all born from a physical birth into this world. The Bible actually says that the Lord was there and he formed us in our, our mother's womb. Our inner, he was there and he, he made us. And uh, praise the Lord for that. But there is a second birth that the Lord is trying to show Nicodemus and to help him understand. Um, and there's a strong assertion when the Lord says, except a man be born again, meaning another birth. Uh, and he's talking about from the beginning or completely or fully um, a second time. Galatians chapter 4 verse 9 would be a good scripture to read there. He's talking about being born again from God, John 19, verse number 11. And so he's asking these questions, and Jesus answered and said, Truly I tell you, unless someone is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you that you must be born again, verse 8. The wind blows where it pleases, and you hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. You see, the Lord is trying to explain to Nicodemus 
what that second birth is all about. It's not a birth of the flesh. It's a birth of the spirit. Um, Nicodemus is puzzled by these words. Uh, J Jesus gave the source of the new birth. He said it's by water. And Jesus gave the importance of being born again. He's saying you can't see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. Jesus gave the, the nature of the birth, meaning it is spiritual, that it's not physical. He reemphasized the absolute necessity of the new birth, uh, that we must be born again. You must be born again. Uh, and that must is that word in, in the original language, the, the Greek language, D-E-I, day, which means absolute. It's an imperative. It's something that you must do. And Jesus illustrated the point by picturing the wind. And here's what he meant by that. We know not how the wind works, but we can see the effects of it. Um, I remember when I was saved. And I remember the day that the Holy Spirit took place in my life. I remember driving home. Well, my parents were driving. I was in the back seat. I was nine years old. But even at nine years old, I remember looking out and thinking the grass looked greener, the sky looked bluer. It's like the veil had been pulled away and I felt the Spirit of God in me even as a child and throughout my life. I have felt the Holy Spirit of God that is leading me and guiding me and is comforting me and is being with me at all times. Um, if, if you were to read verses 9 and 11, you would see that the, the new birth is a true experience. If you were to read verses 11 and 12, you would see that the Holy Spirit is rejected by man because man's nature is not to believe. 1 Corinthians 2.14 tells us that. That new birth comes not from us. I can't choose the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit chooses me. Jesus Christ, God the Father, chose me, and he spoke to my heart. And that new birth was something that Jesus Christ did in me. Um, he is the son of the mediator. He came down from heaven. He is timeless. That's what verse number 13 tells us. And then verse number 14 just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only Son that, that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have, ever, have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. You see that new birth, is secured by two acts. First of all, it's secured by the death of Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for my sins. And, and then he rose again. He gives us the picture of the children of Israel in the wilderness, and they were grumbling. Um, they were complaining and and the Lord decided to show them something. So he, he had Moses lift up this snake in the wilderness and hold it up to them. What happened is they were attacked by all these different, um, oh, something like a bee, a thing that was stinging them and causing horrific pain in their bodies. And the Lord told the people, or had Moses tell the people, if you will look at this, then you will be healed, that you'll be rescued, you'll be changed. And so that serpent that was hanging on that pole, it was symbolic of the defeated Satan. And by looking upon the defeated evil, Israel would be healed. They would not perish, but they would have eternal life. It's a picture of that. The second act is you must believe. And that's what Moses was telling the people as the Lord was conveying that to him, he said, look upon this. They had to make the choice to look upon it. And by looking upon it, they were healed. They were rescued because they saw the defeat of the evil one. And God brought healing in their lives. The same thing's true for you and I today. If we 
will look upon the Lord and look upon Satan as being defeated, then that means nothing that comes in our life can have power over us. The only power things in this life have over us is what we allow it to have. Folks, we have the Holy Spirit of God within us, and that means that we have the greatest power of all because Jesus, the God the Father, and Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit of Christ, interceding for us. Jesus is seated at, the, seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's interceding for you and I and making it possible for us to have life and to have it abundantly. However, if we give power to the things in our world that are from darkness, then what we're doing is we're grieving the Holy Spirit and we're causing situations in our life that do not have to be difficult things in our life that do not have to be because we're not listening to the ways of the Lord, but rather we're following the ways of the wicked one, the enemy. And he's so good at tempting us, but we must make a choice that we are going to look to the Father, to see the defeated enemy. And because of that, and by that, the Holy Spirit can dwell within us. The Holy Spirit can do a work in our lives and bring us to an amazing place of realizing we are born again by the Spirit. And so whatever problems, whatever situations, whatever the things are going on in our lives, we can have victory. And it's because of Jesus Christ and being born again. I pray that you have been born again. I pray that you have given your life to Jesus Christ, that you have been saved, and that you have a relationship in Him, and that when the trumpet blows on that day, or if you were to die today, that you would be in God's presence. Um, I, I pray that you have confidence in your life. If you don't have that confidence, the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart, that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and he rose again, and that he loves you, and that he's living for you, and and he desires to, to be with you, and if you'll just receive him as Lord and Savior, then you will be saved. Call on the name of the Lord, believe in him, and let him save you today. Let me pray with you. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ, and I pray, Lord, that you would speak to their hearts. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit of God. I pray, Father, that we would open our hearts, Lord, that we would listen and turn our way, turn ourselves away from the world and stop listening to the enemy, Father, but our, put our hope and our trust and our focus, Lord, completely on you. I pray, Father, if there's anybody listening today, that you would prick their heart and that they would be born again. That birth, Father, into the kingdom of God, that washing of water, washing away the sins of our life, Lord, and allowing or, or just receiving, Father. It's not that we have to allow it, but it's a receiving of the Holy Spirit in our lives to lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, God bless you. I pray you have a great rest of your day and hope you'll be in church on Sunday. God bless you.